Jacob M. presents Prime Ministerial Prime Elections Ministerial in Canadian election History. The 21st Canadian federal election took place on June 27, 1949, after Governor General Harold Alexander dissolved Parliament. This was the first election that the province of Newfoundland Labrador voted in, since they joined Confederation on March 31, 1949, after a referendum was held in the province a year prior. Before all this, they were part of the United Kingdom, as the Dominion of Newfoundland. Newfoundland and Labrador became the 10th Canadian province, adding seven seats to the House of Commons. Electoral districts were once again redrawn or added, combined to a total of 262 available in the House of Commons, with 132 needed to win in order to form a majority government. Not long after the 1945 election, World War II officially ended as Japan surrendered in August of 1945. Prime Minister Mackenzie King, who managed to keep his government majority, helped establish the United Nations after the 1945 election. A crisis occurred shortly after the war as a Soviet spy named Igor Grudenko defected in Ottawa and told the government about a communist alliance spying in Canada. Prime Minister King established a Royal Commission to investigate the allegations along with Justice Minister Louis Saint Laurent. King also dismantled press censorship after the war concluded. In 1946, King's government introduced the Canadian Citizenship Act. This established that all citizens of Canada who lived in Canada are considered citizens of Canada. Before that, they were considered subjects of Great Britain living in Canada. After his long life in politics, Mackenzie King announced he would not be seeking re-election as Prime Minister and that he was retiring from politics. After this announcement, a party leadership election was held to replace him as a Liberal Party leader and Canadian Prime Minister. At the Liberal leadership election, there were three candidates running to replace Mackenzie King. There was Charles Gavin Power, the Member of Parliament for Quebec South and former Minister of National Defence, James Garfield Gardiner, the Member of Parliament for Melville and Minister of Agriculture, and finally there was Louis Saint Laurent, the Member of Parliament for Quebec East and former Minister of Justice and Secretary of State for External Affairs. Saint Laurent was King's personal choice as his successor, and King campaigned hard for Saint Laurent to succeed him. Saint Laurent's support was very strong throughout the country, especially in Ontario and Quebec. In a speech he made to delegates at the convention, he promised to fight the spread of communism abroad and that the Liberal Party was the only party able to unite French and English Canadians. In the end, Saint Laurent easily won Liberal leadership and was soon sworn in as the 12th Prime Minister in Canadian history. He became the second Francophone Prime Minister after Wilfrid Laurier. The Progressive Conservative Party also went through a leadership election during this time. This was because John Bracken stepped down from leadership after losing to Mackenzie King and the new leader had to be chosen. At the convention, there were just three candidates. There was Donald Fleming, the Member of Parliament for Eglinton. John Diefenbaker, the Member of Parliament for Lake Centre, was back after not winning leadership in 1942. And finally, there was George Drew, the Conservative Premier of Ontario. Drew was highly popular with the party as his provincial victory was credited with gifting Bracken Ontario seats in the previous election. He went into the leadership contest with virtually no competition and in the end won easily on the first ballot. Going into the election, there were a lot more voters in Canada. Notably, Chinese and Japanese Canadians were finally given the right to vote. Prime Minister Saint Laurent was so popular and beloved by the Canadian people that the Liberal Party didn't run on many campaign promises. Instead, the Liberals campaigned on unity since they wanted to restore trust with French Canadians who were forced into conscription. The Liberals ensured high employment and stable income for Canadians as well as health insurance social welfare, and expanded worker rights. The Conservatives once again struggled during this election. Despite George Drew being popular in Ontario and being a World War I veteran, he had a style that not many Canadians liked. Drew traveled across eastern and western Canada but struggled to find an issue to campaign on. One day, Drew stated he'd work on giving the provinces more rights and a larger say in Ottawa, and the next day he'd campaign on fighting socialism, and the day after he'd focus on the economy. Drew mainly focused his campaign on social security promised a national health program and giving more money to families as well as removing background checks for old age pensions. The CCF again campaigned for more welfare and more pension programs. Their leader, MJ Coldwell, once again led them into the election but didn't have much competition with Saint Laurent. The Socreds by this time were led by Solon Earl Lowe, an Alberta member of parliament representing the writing of Peace River. He mainly campaigned on monetary reforms to stop the government from excessively spending. And here are the results. Louis Saint Laurent won, and he won big. 
He won 191 seats, 73 more than in the previous election, and the most seats out of any prime ministerial candidate so far. He received 49.15% of the popular vote. In second was George Drew, with 41 seats, 24 less than in the previous election. Drew's mostly uneventful and flip-flopping campaign cost him seats, and he received 29.65% of the popular vote. In third was the CCF, with 13 seats, 15 less than in the previous election. Their loss of seats came mostly because of Saint Laurent's popularity. They received 13.42% of the popular vote. Finally, in fourth place was the Social Credit Party with 10 seats, 3 less than in the previous election, and just 2.31% of the popular vote.